Hello. Um, you know, the videos I've done on price elasticity of demand, I did two videos on that, were very, very popular. Uh, I got a lot of views on that. And, um, and it's clear to me that this, you know, this fundamental tool for an economist of elasticity, there are people out there who really want to understand that because that's going to kind of gateway to much of uh, microeconomics. So, um, to add to those videos, um, I, I want to put up a video on income elasticity of demand, and then I'll do a couple of other elasticity videos as well, I think. Uh, and I'm hoping this will be as useful to you as the price elasticity of demand videos were. Uh, income elasticity of demand is a measurement of the responsiveness of demand for a good when there's a change in income, not a change in price. The price of the good is irrelevant here. It's when our income changes, because of course our demand for goods is affected by many things. Our demand for goods is not just affected by the goods price, it's affected by our income. It's the demand for a good is affected by fashions, laws, the weather, the, the size of a population, advertising, the prices of other goods, and so on. All kinds of factors impact on the demand for a good. And a major one is income. When our income changes, the demand we have for certain goods will change as well. For most goods, a change in income will lead to a corresponding change in demand in the same direction. If our income goes up, our demand for the good goes up. We call those goods normal goods. But for some goods, the demand for, our, for the good changes in the opposite direction to income. If our income rises, our demand for that good would fall. If our income falls, the demand for the good would rise. These goods are called inferior goods. Okay, so let's explore this a little bit. Income elasticity of demand, then. The, the equation for calculating the value of elasticity, uh, income elasticity of demand for a good is as follows. We use Y for income, of course, because I is reserved for investment. So, income elasticity of demand is the income divided by quantity times change in quantity over change in income. Let me give you an example. Let's imagine that... Uh, my income rises from 100 pounds to 120 pounds, okay? And let's explore what happens to my demand for steak. I like steak, okay? I like steak, but I just can't afford to buy as much of it as I'd like to buy. When my income Let's draw this as a table. When my income was 100, let's say that the, the quantity of steak that I was buying was 40. And when my income goes up to 120, I see that the quantity I'm buying is now 60. Let's calculate the value of the YED. Well, Y over Q is 100 divided by quantity 40 times the change in quantity. Well, quantity rose by 20, so 20 divided by the change in income. Well, that's also 20. So, 100 over 40 times 20 over 20, if you do the maths, you'll find that that comes to, I hope, 2.5. And it's positive, okay? In fact, I should have written that equals plus 2.5. There are two things that we can take from this. I need a bit of space, so I'm gonna rub out this, uh, the, the, these notes here. There are two pieces of information we must analyze when we get a YED reading. We must look at the sign and the size. The sign and the size. Well, the sign is positive. It's plus, it's a positive number, and that tells us it's plus means normal good. That means that the demand changes in the same direction as our income. Income has risen, so is the demand for stake. The size tells us uh, how responsive the demand was, and that's pretty high. That's elastic. It's, it's, it's greater than, than one, therefore it's income elastic. In fact, for every 1% change in my income, I got a 2.5% rise uh, in the demand for this good. For every 1% rise in my income, 2.5% rise for the good. But let's imagine that at the same time as my increasing demand for steak, um, I also used to buy uh, bus tickets. Sorry, it's a boring example, but uh, it's Friday morning, 
I'm just too tired to think of anything better. So bus tickets. Now let's imagine that uh, when my income when my income was 100, I used to buy 200 bus tickets. But when my income rose to 120, I bought less bus tickets. I only bought 180 bus tickets. I used to, uh, let's say, uh, treat, be able to afford now to treat myself to a taxi ride instead of getting the bus on Friday mornings when I'm very tired. So, what does this do to YED? Well, let's work it out again. Y over Q is 100 over 200. times changing Q, now this is minus 20, very important you put the minus in, minus 20 over changing Y, well that Y has risen, the income has risen by 20. There, look at that now, that calculates to minus 0.5, and that reveals quite a, a lot. Again, we must look at sign and size. The sign tells us it's inferior, it's an inferior good. The demand for it changes in the opposite direction, to our uh, income change. My income rose, but my demand fell. Comes out as negative. The 0 0.5 tells us that it's income inelastic. Not very responsive. A 1% change in my income would cause a half a percent change in my demand for this good. The sign and the size, that's the trick with income elasticity of demand. Sign will tell you is it normal, is it inferior. Size will tell you the, the size of the elasticity. Is it income elastic, if it's over one, if it's income inelastic? Okay, look at those two things separately, the sign and the size. Okay, of course there is another equation. You may not be able to use this equation. You may have to use what I call the percentage equation, which is percent change in uh, quantity divided by percent change in income. Because you might just be told something like, uh, after a 10% rise in income, my demand for, uh, for bus tickets falls by 20% or something like that. In which case you'll have to work with percentages because you don't have absolute numbers. But the interpretation is exactly the same. Okay, that's income elasticity of demand. How, how responsive our demand for a good is and in which direction it goes following a change in income. Okay, thanks very much. See you.